I don't know how I feel about this. Info out, out done, this. bang, gang, ding, ding, ding. Leave get... it, Mum, I'm changing my own napping. Because <laughs> I've got drive, I've got determination. <laughs> Let me get that, I can help you with the dishwasher. Hello and welcome to the Therapy Crouch with me, Peter Crouch. Uh, I've got Abby Clancy with me. What hello, hello, at? hello. What are you laughing at? <laughs> no, no, just l laughing with our ass. Oh, OK. Um, Thanks, <laughs> At him or with him? No, not at him, with him. Oh, OK. What, am I not involved? No, you are involved. Uh, I, I, we just... Yeah, you're the one we're laughing at. Private joke. <laughs> private joke, was it's it? It's a private joke. OK. It's a family thing. <laughs> Uh, oh, Pete hates that one. <laughs> so before we started this, before the cameras were turned on, you said, I'll, I'll get the cameras on quick because I, I can feel pure gold bursting out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got a lot to live up to on this podcast now. Uh, well, that's put me under pressure somewhat. Yeah, well, it has, yeah. But I, I don't know. I just feel full of energy, full of life. I'm happy. It's the dog countdown, isn't it? The puppy countdown. Yeah, so I'm preparing things. I'm nesting. I'm nesting. When you know, does this nesting like end though? You know what I mean? When when have you nested? What's nesting? Ne She's... Nesting is a a thing that women do before a new arrival. <laughs> it's so a they're... definite thing. They do because it's like their home. They make it like really homely. Um, you know, when we brought our kids in, you would everything had to be perfect, didn't it? Yeah. But I feel like it's it's kind of, we've been together for 17 years, I feel like it's a continual nesting period. When does it, when do you go, ah, oh, I've nested? But the thing is, like, do you want to be married to a slob? Like, it's just so fucking annoying. Like, just be grateful. <laughs> like, genuinely, like, I mean this. I actually mean this. Like, oh, just be so, grateful. So, sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, I'm clean. Oh, I must try harder to be dirtier. That'd work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would. You know what I mean, though. It's like just, just stop interfering in my things. Let in your nesting. All right, it's I don't understand it personally. Okay, well I'm gonna let me take this cushion for instance, right? You've, you've, you're nesting on this couch. Like, you've brought in a splash of colour today and with another cushion that we, we don't need. We don't need any of them, really. Well, I just emptied the cinema room cause, and I just thought a little splash of colour on the beige couch. Okay. To match my mood. <laughs> Colourful. Okay. <laughs> All right. We, you've actually to... really offended me. With what? It, do you know what I'm going to do, genuinely? I'm just not. I'm just going to not clean for a week. I'm not going to do an online shop. I'm not going to pack the kids' bags. I'm not going to do anything. And then you will be begging for me to come back. But the thing Stop is yawning like, with your mouth closed. Not, no, I was, I was as an intake of breath for me to, to say what I think. Go on. And what I think is that you couldn't do that. You couldn't not clean. I think, you know, we did this the other day. I don't know if you know, we, we were sat in the kitchen and we did a ADHD <laughs> test, didn't we? I, I, it's not something to be laughed at. I mean, that's just serious, obviously, a serious thing. I keep getting accused of having ADHD. But every question was... I've got some of the questions here, actually. It's, challeng it's challenging for me to pause and think before acting when I experience strong emotions. And what was the, what were the, uh, the box you had to think? Strongly agree? Strongly, strongly agree to strongly dis disagree mm -hmm, yeah, and everything yeah. in between. Okay, so that one, strongly agree. Mm -hmm. My emotions heavily influence my decision-making process, sometimes leading to impulsive choices. Strongly agree. Capapoo. I often make decisions impulsively, then often regret them later. <laughs> strongly agree. Peter Grouch. <laughs> I struggle to wait my turn in conversations. Strongly oh, agree. Yeah. <laughs> I interrupt. Strongly agree twice. <laughs> I interrupt others when they are speaking or working. Strongly, <laughs> this is a joke. Like I often finish other people's sentences. <laughs> like seriously, yeah. I have difficulty keeping my thoughts to myself when until it's my turn to speak. My favorite one of that is when I'm telling a story. She'll take that story off me, and say it even though she wasn't there and it was my story yeah yeah Repair because them. I've heard it and I can just add a little bit of elastic and make it more entertaining <laughs> you know but the thing is it's <laughs> like mad, it? I feel I feel like it's something to do with being like busy and having so many things on your mind and it's like I can't enjoy a leisurely chat 
I can't Why enjoy. Not? I want it just to be, you know. You need to just get the info out quick. Info and move out, on to the done, next bang, thing. gang, ding, ding, ding. But if you think about people, that the best storytellers, they, 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 they take their time and build up the scene and tell the story and, and finish it with a. I know people are not fucking roll doll. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm just saying, like. When I read kids, when I read to the kids at night, like I'll do the voices and. Mm you know, take my time. I like that. But I've just got loads to do. Like like most people, you know, our our way of life now nowadays in society, it's very fast paced and you've got a million things to do. And I don't but, know. but you always say that, like you always say I've got so much to do. Like but you don't you just need to just not But if we were both like you in the relationship, Pete, <laughs> that just wouldn't work either. No, I agree with, I agree with that, but I think that's why we're a good team. Yeah, you know? I agree. Because but the ADHD thing, I, I'm, I'm going to look into it more. But I don't know. I just, I just think it's about, you know, be, you know. I have heard your stories a lot. Yeah, but you know, it's one of those things. Like I, I've heard your stories a lot as well, and you'll tell. But you a story, still like mine. And sometimes I know that Abby's actually lying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'll let her carry on, you know. And, yeah, yeah. And You've got my it, back. I don't say anything. I mean, I just don't. I don't. Whereas if I tell a story and put throw a bit of elastic on it, Abby will go, "That didn't happen." <laughs> That's bollocks, he's lying. <laughs> and like blowing me up to the old table. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of um, storytelling, we were in um, the Penguin Building this week, mm. recording our audio book. I felt quite intimidated going into the Penguin Building. Yeah, why? Did you? Because, why? Because here we are. Yeah, I'm going to set the scene. When you walk in, to the Penguin Building, you're auto well. I automatically feel inferior and less intelligent than everyone else because they read a lot of books. Yeah, and write books. Yeah, and I know you know we've written our book. You've wrote, you, you've got three books, so mm -hmm. you know you probably don't feel like that. But I don't think anyone has ever, you know, played the guess guess the sex emoji game in the <laughs> lobby of the Penguin Building. Mm. No, I don't think they have. I think that was the first for them. Um, but that but is... That, that, that's a positive thing, I think. You know, there's no book like ours. No, there's not. And, um, you know, that game actually is something I would like to incorporate actually in the podcast uh, because I found it fantastic. So the game is, you know, we had to kind of... We had a series of emojis sent to us and we had to guess what the sexual pun or sexual connotation was. Yeah, there was a screw and a hole... Um, <laughs> A helicopter, <laughs> <laughs> um, various things, and we did, we did make you know just, I felt, just super in, one of those super intelligent games. Yeah, it's one not low brow at all. It's one yeah. we could incorporate into this podcast, but I think um, we traumatized the penguin people. Probably, but you know what? The books turned out really well, and and I've, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. No, and we're proud of it. Really proud of it. You know, if you like the podcast, you'll like the book. Twelfth uh, of October. There you go. God, it's. It's actually a mental experience, isn't it? You know, obviously, the whole process of the book, you know, series of interviews, you know, then we wrote the chapters, the chapters were written, you know, we'd approve them. It's only when you're actually reading things you've said out loud, you're like, I didn't say that. <laughs> so the whole time I was like, sorry, pause. I don't think I said this. And, and they're, they're like, the no, you did. Here's the dictaphone. Like, the literally, dictaphone. Like, literally, like, I've done audio books before. Oh, right? all right. But I've not done one with Ab. <laughs> That was an experience. <laughs> no, I was in the booth with Darth Vader. So Pete's sitting opposite me like this. <sighs> down, the, And even the guy was like too, too like shy to say to Pete, can you step away from the mic, sir? <laughs> Your breath is off-putting. <laughs> but Pete's like that in the booth, having a full row. What do, you, what do you want me to do? Just not breathe? Do you want me to just not breathe in here and die? I'm like, but you don't have to breathe into the mic. And like all, you know, sitting opposite you. Because it's not often you sit opposite for, opposite someone for a long period of time. Do you know what I mean? So I've done three audio books before and not had a one issue. Right, I do one with you, and there was an issue every five minutes. We had to pause every five minutes for. Yeah, a, but you either can't. You, I, I don't understand why you can't hear yourself breathe like that. Well, I can't really. Like, I, we all know I've got an issue with my nose that I, <laughs> I can't really. So I, I do, unfortunately. The mouth breathe a little bit. <laughs> you know that causes HDHD. 
HDHD. A A D H D. Can't imagine the quality on a HDHD. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Did I tell you about that? I'm not fishing. No. 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 So no, if you have hiccups mm. and you say Wasn't I'm not a fish, they go. That's not true. Honestly, did happen. I watched it firsthand, and I've seen it twice. I've only seen it done twice, and it's worked twice. I'm not a fish. So when you've got hiccups, you say I'm not a fish. And your hiccups disappear. So we were out with, out with our, some of our friends at the golf club the other day. And I had the hiccups and Olivia said, you need to say, I'm not a fish. And I said it and they instantly stopped. This leads me fantastically on to oh, our yeah, weekly we wine. Go. Here we go, straight in. You know, because obviously the puppy thing, puppy gate. Mm. So We all know my thoughts on it. It's just, it's just bedlam, ridiculous. Yeah, but the kids are like all... The kids are all so excited and I live my life for my kids and I want them to be happy and I also want to make myself Absolutely happy. Absolutely nothing about the children. Also, you think this dog's for me? 100%. <laughs> million percent. You, it's all for you. So so why why is that such a problem for you? That's fine. I want you to do things that you enjoy, but just don't involve me in it. Like, I, I don't want... I, it, it's the same happened with Jeffrey. I did, you know, I didn't want a dog. Yeah, but I love look dogs. At the, look at I the did, benefits. I love him now. Look at the benefits of it. But this is the problem. I'm not going to not like the dog. I'm going to. I'm not an animal hater. I, I love animals, but I just don't. I just don't want another thing to have to worry about and look after. So we had a bit of a row over this puppy. Anyway, first day back in the gym as well. By the way, so he completely ruined that for me because I was on the the bike in tears. Oh, that's going too far now. That's I, not true. I was on the bike crying because Peter were not allowed to have the dog. And he texts me saying, I love you, but you are ruining my life. I <laughs> want a text. So I, I was Full like, stop. you know, it's first day back in the gym, feeling good, mm. full of energy. And then like, just nearly started crying over this text because I'm ruining my, ruining my husband's life. That, that was, I mean, I was, I was being serious, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, you know, I, 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 at least I said, I love you. You are trying to make my life can, so much harder. I don't know. You can love someone that ruins your life. No, you're just making my life a lot more difficult than it than it needs to be all the time. Yeah, but it's, you're not gonna. I swear to you, Pete. You don't have to have anything to do with the puppy. And then to make it up to me, he bought the puppy pen, the puppy pads, the puppy food, the puppy bed. Oh, what a shit bag! So he does love you. What a shit bag. You know when you just get worn down by your family, like, and I know, because I know a lot of my friends have, have had the same problem. They, they say, no, 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 and it's every day, every day, and you just go, oh, do you know what? Just, God, well, think. why can't you just say yeah? Well, I, it looks like I have now, doesn't it? Yeah, but it? look at, look at how, how much it's stress you would have saved yourself if you just said, babe, that's an amazing idea. You're going to be so happy. The kids are going to be delighted. And I'm bang up for it. But what about me, though? Like, everyone else is going to be happy apart yeah, from it's me. It's five against one. Because shit out of the garden, you know, training another puppy. Uh, oh, I trained right, Jeffrey. Caesar. <laughs> I trained Jeffrey, didn't I? Yeah, you did, and you loved it. Well, People used to be like that in the garden. Film me. Film me. And you'd have a little puppy this big in the garden. Sit. Fetch. Doing all the tricks. Can was, film this, babe. Come and film this. Oh, man, it was nice it. because it was it was it was listening to me, and and no one else does in this house other than that dog. And that I, dog. And I love him for it. Mm. Oh, that's so funny. So would you say you were like Jeffrey's role model? Yeah, I would say that. <laughs> well, he looks up to me, doesn't he? Like he looks at me like I'm his master, and I I do I like that. Like he's. When we take him for a walk, how excited was he this morning? Yeah. When I said, go get Jeffrey going for a walk. It's he's ridiculous. Like, he, he jumps in the air like six feet off the ground. It's like we're going on the same walk that we go on every single day. But he day doesn't do that like, with me. It's, it's like Christmas Day for him every day. And you just think, <laughs> look how excited he is. I'm when gonna, I take him for that. a walk, I'm like, Jeffrey, come for a walk. He's like that. Because he knows he's like coming in the car, going the dry cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to walk around the local village. <laughs> He knows jobs. like yeah, because I'm too scared to walk in the woods on my own. I'm just not gonna do it. Mm. I am petrified, like it's my like a phobia. And um We don't like doing much on your own, really, do you? No, no, I I I, I am a wuss, but you know, so what? Um audience wines? 
Yeah, let's get can, into can, the audience. Can you Pacey, do you have a wine for the week? Uh, my, my wine's the dog. It, it you... revolves around the dog. Oh, okay. Um, I, and I think that, obviously, I, th- I know, I think I've probably said this before, but, you know, that is the, that is the main wine I'm thinking about at the moment. Uh, your wine is, is me not wanting the dog and my wine is you wanting the dog. No, my wine is that you told me that I was ruining your life. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're not ruining it. You, you, I think you enrich it. But you're just making it. You think? You think? I just think you're making it harder for me to get through, to navigate it. <laughs> what I'm doing, you know, it's a bit, it's a ploy. It's, it's tactical. I'm going to get as many animals in here as I possibly can before we have to sell up and buy the ranch. <laughs> <laughs> the ranch. You've got a split personality. Last week, you were like, you can have, uh, if you, if my girl wants a miniature donkey, she's having a miniature donkey. Next minute, I'm getting a bloody puppy that the whole of Surrey have got this breed. Uh, you know, renowned, hypoallergenic, doesn't doesn't bark, doesn't molt. Hypoallergenic? Hypoallergenic. It doesn't. It will bark. I'd, I'd say dogs probably bark. If any of our <laughs> listeners have got a cavapoo, can you all tweet Peter and tell him how amazing they are and that they, they, they're not barkers? No, be honest with me. Like, I feel like we've built up a nice relationship here on the therapy crouch. Be honest with me, if you think that we should get it, get in touch. And if you think we shouldn't get it, get in touch. If you had one and you think they bark and they, they're the pain it, in the ass. For me, it is exhausting, like being married to you, like waking up, like what mood's he in? Does he what? like animals today? What does mood's he, he in me? Does he, is he an animal hater? Is he Cruella or is he Ace Ventura? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what, imagine me, when you, when you wake up, I'm like, what animal is she going to get today? <laughs> so, I, talking of animals, so this week, um, the school had a family fun day. Mm. And, you know, it was a great day. You know, bouncy castles, face painting, all little stalls that the kids have set up, you know, little games and stuff. Buy the ticket, win lollipop, whatever. Pony rides, outdoor soft play. And then they had a kind of reptile section. It's funny, this. Where you can hold a snake, a bearded dragon, python, a what? Tarant- bearded dragon, lizards. Yeah, yeah lizard. Um, a bearded dragon. A bearded, bearded dragon. dragon. It's like a lizard. Yeah, yeah, bearded dragon, snake, tarantula. The queue was ridiculous. This so I'm standing there for about half an hour in this queue. Get to the front of the queue, turn around, all the kids are gone. I can see them on the bouncy castle. So where's me holding a giant millipede? <laughs> a tarantula and a snake on my own. Do you know what's so funny is that I was going, she was, she sh- uh, showed me some pictures of the day because um, I wasn't there, I was, at, I was at the football. And I was going through and I was going, oh, great day, great day. And then it was just pictures of Ab, right, with random, like, animals. And I thought, where are the kids here, yeah, mate? <laughs> <laughs> he was just holding, holding animals on their own. <laughs> But turns, no kids. It turns out these, um, you know, do you ever remember those like toothbrushes that were in like a little ball and you could get them oh, like yeah, in... Oh yeah, like the chewy ones. In, in like service like, station yeah, toilets yeah, yeah. or whatever. Oh, and it was like yeah. a toothbrush yeah. and a, it was like those like kind of plastic spindly mm. things. That's what its little legs were like. Millipede. The millipede and it kind of gripped around and it was such a nice feeling. It turns out these giant millipedes are incredible pets. Oh, don't, yeah. <laughs> don't even start. Like, come on. So when Millip- you're... We can't have millipedes running around the house. <laughs> <laughs> Audience wines. Audience wines. Oh, God. Can you read today or not? Shut up. <laughs> Hi, Abby and Pete. I don't have a wine, but I wanted to give, in the words of Ross, a weekly shine. That's She's so welcome. weird. I was thinking about this today when I was getting ready. I was like, do you know what? I'm feeling that positive. I want to... Do a weekly shine. A weekly shine. It's about my husband and his awesomeness. It's his oh. 40th birthday, firstly, so he deserves this. He is honestly perfect in every way. He came into our lives and instantly loved my two children. He came into our lives and instantly loved my two children from a previous marriage. We now have three kids and life is just perfect. He's perfect and the kids and I want to say thank you for everything you do for us. We love you. Happy birthday. Oh. What a lovely message. That is a lovely message. That's really lovely, nice, that. yeah. Really nice. That time you started saying things like that. I do think that. I say it to you all the time. 
It's only you who sends texts like you're ruining my life <laughs> over a fucking puppy. You read that one? <laughs> Can you believe that? Actually, I, I love you. Don't I cried on the, bo- on the bike. Oh, that is sad. I had to really leave did. my gym class. Oh. It's, listen, I, I do love you, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you are ruining my life. <laughs> Whenever my husband wants to get in shape, he just won't do it. He has to make a plan, research, wait for protein powder to come. How do I get him to bloody do it? <laughs> I can't do this excuses, yet. Excuses, excuses, excuses. You just got to get up and go. Do you know, I find that with people, people who talk the talk and they're like constantly saying, like talking about, oh, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. that does it. They're always full of shit. Yeah. You know, people who are good at stuff just get up and do just it. Get up and do I, it. I yeah. think. No, I agree. I agree. Is um, it... but it is, in all fairness to him, it is hard to get motivated, especially if you're out of that routine of going to the gym, eating right. You know, it's easy to get stuck in a rut. Mm-hmm. You know, eat that packet of biscuits. You know, have that slice of pizza, not work out. Yeah. Once you're in it, you, you, oh, you kind it's of really enjoy it, don't you? But it's hard to kind of do that first one. Mm. The first week. By the end of the week, you're like, yeah, this is great, but the first week. All right, well, you know, he's just got to get back into it, isn't he? I think men gently just kind of, maybe go with him. Maybe go together. Do you know what? That's actually a really good idea. There's nothing better than a gym buddy. Someone to spare you on, mm-hmm. someone to hold your hand, someone to go through the pain to get, together with. Together with? Someone mm. to go through that pain with. Yeah. We went to gym the other day, didn't we? Yeah, we did, Come yeah, on. enjoyed it. Couples who train together, stay together. So they do, yeah. Mm. Correct. All right, here's another one. Hi, guys. Absolutely love the pod. My fellow, uh, me and my fellow watch every week. My whine is that when I tell him something, like a new fact, for example, there's a hurricane coming this week, he acts completely uninterested, uninterested to what I've just said. However, later on, I hear him in conversation with someone else repeating my facts oh my like God. they're his. You do this. This is exactly what you do. <laughs> you do this. No, but you do this. You know who's the, the, the worst at this? Robin. Robin. <laughs> so we'll tell Robin something a bit of goss or a fact or this is happening you know the trains are going on strike tomorrow yeah, yeah. 20 minutes later he'll call us up you know the trains are going on strike tomorrow <laughs> oh, you know she said this they're splitting up the goss or... you told him yeah 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 he's like famous for it isn't he he is yeah I've told him things in the past and uh, you know two not even just a couple of days later he'll come over and tell me what I've told him two days ago so he must have told that many people that he's forgot where he heard it from <laughs> I said, don't tell anyone, but this has happened. And um, he must have told so many people that he's forgotten. So the guy at the rugby club told me this, and he'll be like, what? I told you that yesterday. You know, I I heard an amazing fact the other day. Yeah, go on. Well, uh, you know, um, the Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. So Alfred Nobel, Swedish scientist, invented dynamite. And he had a brother, and his brother died. And in the papers, he printed that it was him. And all the the um, news stories about him dying was, you know, he was the creator of war and bombs and this and that. He's like, you know, caused so much pain and death. And he was that traumatised about, you know, that was his legacy. He decided to flip it all around and every penny he's earned, give it all to incredible causes. And I, I just thought that was amazing. So obviously to change his legacy before, you know, he would die. So that's a Nobel Prize. Did he start the Nobel Peace Prize? Yeah. So he he, he 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 donated all of his money and everything to peace causes. It's amazing, though. No? Don't you think that's... In- mm, yeah. Did you know that? I knew, I knew that he meant to TNT, but I didn't know that was what happened with the obituary. Yeah. And so that's why it's the Nobel Peace Prize. To- mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's also the best football channel. <laughs> what is? TNT. <laughs> oh, God. But well, I should get into the pod then. Mm. Talk about role models today. Obviously, I'm yours. What? What? Um, why is that? You, I, I would, I would clash you as my one, one of my. Obviously, I don't want to say it. What? I actually consider myself as a bit of a role model <laughs> to myself. And I know that might sound strange and narcissistic, but by that, what I mean is. You know yourself what's right and wrong and what's a good thing to do. And if you like live by the right morals and do things correctly. I don't think you can be your own role model. Can you? <laughs> Just a few captions from this podcast is when you die, you want simply the best at your funeral. <laughs> um, you've said you're always right. 
and you're your own ro role model. <laughs> no, because I, I, I think what, what, you know, you should be your own role model. You should go, I'm going to do this because it's the right thing to go. I'm yeah. going to say that because it's kind. And if you live by them things, you know, yeah, but that, I don't that think you can be a role model. You, like, you, you have to like be a role model for your kids, obviously. Yeah, a role model for you. But you're also a role model for yourself by choose, making the right decisions and d doing and saying the right things. I think, do you, do you understand what I mean yeah, or not? A role, yeah, a role model surely is someone that you look up to, aspire to or inspire you to be better. Mm. You know, so I don't think you can pick yourself. <laughs> Who's your role models kind of growing up? <laughs> Who did you look to for inspiration? Did you have an inspirational teacher? Madonna. Madonna, yeah. <laughs> did you want to I be love Madonna. Madonna. I used to just watch her concerts. No, for me, I think, you know, the whole role model thing starts at home, doesn't it? You learn from your parents. I, I like to think that we're good role models for our kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, try to be. You know, main number one thing, there's a lot of love and there's a lot of laughter in our house and that's kind of our like main ethos to love each other, be kind. And then I think also the kids looking at us working, working hard. You know, some of the things we teach them, like never give up, be yourself. You know, Sophia with the swimming, she hates it, doesn't she? And we make a go. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, you know, that's instilling, you know, a good worth ethic. I think that's instilling a good worth ethic and, you know, our kids are born into a very, very privileged life and different to what we had. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to be extra vigilant when we're kind of, you know. Yeah, try and keep them grounded a little bit. Keep them grounded and... Yeah, that's important. That's 100% important. Yeah, we, you, listen, as parents, you have to be role models, don't you? You mm -hmm. have to live the correct way that your, your kids see you living that way and, and, and want to follow suit. Like I had role models growing up, obviously, with the football. Um, you know, Mr. Waring, uh, North Ealing Primary School. Uh, you know, Andy Campbell, my first football manager. My dad, obviously, huge influence kind of on my, on my football career. And then like, later down the line, when I first started playing for Tottenham, my dad's bullpen believed in me pro probably when, when no one else did. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and then from there, you have managers that believe in you and, and, and you'd say they're role models, but then there's footballers that I looked up to. And, and yeah. I suppose being a footballer myself, then you become a role model to other people and you yeah. try and do things the but, right but that, way. But that's quite an unusual path that you've had, you know, because not a lot of people have been in your situation or, you know, make it as footballers. And so you have been inspired, but most people in general, day-to-day -day life, they're not going to football camps and not going to football training they haven't got managers buying them and believing in them you know if it doesn't have to be football <clears> what <throat> i'm saying is that was my industry but yeah. it doesn't have to be football it could be you know i want to be in advertising and i look at a, you know, an advertising executive or creative and you think god he's the one and he, he look at the stuff he does and you know if you want to be a musician you look at you know someone well, that's what ed sheeran did ed sheeran said he wanted like james blunt's career but 10 times better and he's got it <laughs> You know, I think, but I, I think it takes a certain individual to have that mentality. Not everyone has got that to go, you know, pick someone and go, right, I want to be them. I want to do better than them. That's not everyone. Like, you know, Michael Jordan, all of, yeah, you, you know, those that, that, that kind of, they cannot stop Ronaldo. They create, like, I reckon Ronaldo would say he was his own role model. Yeah, but you say, yeah, yeah he probably would. Yeah, he but, would. No, but I still think that those people have inspirations. Like, mm. you know, Michael Jordan might have looked at Magic Johnson and yeah. said, I want to, and then you, as you get older, you become your own person. But I think you do need to be inspired by someone or something. Mm. You know, you can't just, you can't just, I, I don't think do I it. think teachers pr play a huge role in kids' lives as role models and inspirations. You know, we all, we all had that teacher that we loved. It was like mm. so much fun. And I think you get, so, you know, if I was a teacher, I'd be Jack Black in bloody mm. School of Rock. Imagine him being your music teacher. Yeah. Wouldn't that be it? You would learn so much because you'd be so excited and enthusiastic to get in the class instead of, right, kids, open your page on, open your book on page 34. Today we're learning the violin. How boring is that? Yeah. But like that, that like all, the, all the best lessons and probably, you know, the most you got out of school with, and the lessons you enjoy and still to this day are mainly because you've had a good teacher in that lesson, mm. really. Because if what, they make it interesting. No, I, in one of the schools Sophia's been in, in, in a course of her life, she did c quite badly in one subject. I think it was geography. And how interesting can geography be? 
you know, it, I no, love geography. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. Uh, no. Oh yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. geography is so, so interesting. Mm -hmm. Learning about the world, you know, everything, countries, cultures, you know, rocks, rain, mm. <laughs> Oxbow lakes, rock, <laughs> Oxbow lakes. Yeah, mm. everything. I, I sound. I can't even think of what I'm saying here. But <clears throat> and and the teacher was like telling me how badly, like she'd done, and I was like, I've been speaking to you for ten seconds, and you're fucking boring me to death. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> No wonder she's done badly in this. And then I went on to the, and the, you know, this is over Zoom. And then the next teacher I was speaking to, she, A star student, fantastic, 100%. The teacher, the English teacher, was phenomenal. Mm. You know, he lit up the screen, full of enthusiasm, mm. you know, great. And I thought, that is the difference. Yeah. You know, and I think, you know, if I owned a school, that's what I'd be looking out for. Like inspirational teachers, someone who'd, you know, get the kids running into the classrooms to like, why are you laughing? <laughs> no, just the thought of you running a school, St. Trinian's. I'd be like Miss Trudgeball. <laughs> yeah. Get in the cupboard! <laughs> oh, oh. You've got a mixture of Trunchbull and honey, but I think that's good. Is I what? am a mixture of Trunchbull and honey. Yeah. Trunny. Which is good. Trunny. Trunny. <laughs> Miss Trunny. Close one. <laughs> what? What? Nothing. Yeah. What do you mean? Nothing. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I think you've got your good mix of both. Mm. And um, that's what you need in a school, you know? So if you are, if you do own a school and you're looking for <laughs> someone to run it, <laughs> Miss, Mrs. Clancy or Mrs. Crouch, which one would you go by? If you, were, if you were in a school tomorrow, would you be Mrs. Clancy or Mrs. Crouch? Clancy's more Miss Honey to me and Crouch is more Miss Trunchbull. I don't like the name Crouch, really. I don't love it as a, as a word. As it's, a word. It's harsher. Clancy's seems more Miss Clancy, Miss Honey, Miss Trunchbull, Miss Crouch. I can kind of see what you mean, but I can't figure out why. But yeah, it's a bit harsher. It's just a harsher. It's just a more of an end, isn't it? Anything without an E on the end. Mm. That's another thing I was, I was um, reading up about. What name to call the dog? Optimus Prime's not going to work. Why? Because dogs respond to the E kind of syllable. Primey. 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 Like Charlie, Albie. Right, okay. Doggy. <laughs> Doggy. <laughs> <laughs> Puppy. <laughs> <laughs> For coffee. <laughs> Get outy. Stay with Yari. <laughs> Re homie. <laughs> I love the dog. I'm going to love it. It's not, you know, it's one of those things. Isn't We're going to have it on the show next week. Mm. <laughs> no, so role models, you know, it, it is, you know, do you feel under pressure to be like kids' role models? Because obviously, you know, we're only human. You know, we like to have a laugh, you know, have a few drinks or say silly things, do silly things, and then you think, oh my God, because I often think that, you know, when we've had a few drinks and then we put something on Instagram or whatever, inappropriate, and then I've got to like go and speak to the headmaster the next day. And I will, <sighs> you, you kind of forget that, you know, things like Instagram, social media, like that everyone can see it. Yeah, I did feel like I had to make conscious, conscious efforts like when I was a footballer, like only just around like kids and stuff, because I remember when I met professional footballers like around near you'd, you'd you'd be so starstruck yeah so so i knew that how i felt so i was like i i would try and make a conscious effort to try and make them feel yeah special or you know not kind of do anything or say anything wrong around them and because i think you do you do have to be a role model and you can't be a role model all the time and we're only human so you do make mistakes but i think around the kids and stuff like like i don't like it now when you see you see kids kind of around the players sometimes like when they're coming into the game and they ignore them that's the, the, all the young players do that now like in, in, ignore all they, of well, the they, there's a headphone thing now isn't there they put the headphones on they, 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 they try and get away from but people but they need a bloody blindfold not headphones you can still see them I know I know it, there's a few you know there's been I mean? a few yeah. bad kind of videos like that but, uh, I think I think you do have to because it just means so much to, to the kids right? doesn't mm. it so I, think, I do think there's an element of that where you have to be a role model, but you have to be a role model to like young girls. That's the amount of young girls when we were around that come up to you and ask you about I know, but things. I, I and... feel so funny about that. I, like, I, I don't feel like worthy, number one, to be even considered to be a role model whatsoever. Yeah, apart but from the, for yourself. The, the girls uh, do. Apart from for yourself. Apart from myself. No. <laughs> can I just say, can I just, I, I, I can't articulate my, myself very well. What I'm trying to say is, 
people should be their own role model in a way. Like, yeah. have drive, get up and go, mm -hmm. be polite, be well mannered, be kind. Yeah, but what? But we're talking about your role models or whatever. You know what I mean? You can't be your own role model. That's that's just being a decent person, isn't it? That's just setting a, some values and and living by them. Exactly. So why would you pick that from someone else? You pick it from yourself. Yeah, but I do think you see those qualities in others, and you think I'm going to take that on board, and that's kind of the yeah, role but what model. If you're born with them qualities. <laughs> so then you were born with all those qualities. <laughs> No, I'm born with drive, determination, drive, determination. Greatness. I just came out and went, "What are we doing, Mum?" I didn't say we're going to shoot for the stars. Yeah. <laughs> no, that is not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is, you don't have to leave go... it, Mum. I'm changing my own napping because I've got drive. I've got determination. Let me get that. Can I help you with the dishwasher? You Two are years old. Such an old asshole. I didn't mean that. I'm saying, why would you? Why would you try and emulate someone else's qualities when you can have them yourself? Yeah, yeah, I agree. But I just think that you do need to get them from someone else. Okay, I got you... them from my mum and dad then. Got it from my mama. I got it from my mama. <laughs> yeah, okay. you know, I, I, my mum was my role model. You know, there you she... go then. We got it out, finally. Yeah, but you're just twisting what I was saying. <laughs> you said you were your own role model. I didn't I say I was my own it. role model. I said, well, yeah, in a way. But I, I should be my own role model. It, it's what's what inside. What are you talking about? It's what's inside. What are you talking about? Oh, you Come. don't understand. <laughs> I don't. Fuck off. Correct, I don't. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on, we're having a di discussion here. I've pulled you up and what I think is incorrect and you've just, in the end you've just gone, fuck off. Grow up. <laughs> Grow up. You know exactly what I'm trying to say. Toe rag. <laughs> <laughs> toe rag. You are a toe rag. It's the only word to describe you, Peter. I've learned oh. toe rag for ages, have you? No. Toe rag. God, that's gone out of fashion. Our kids don't even know what toe rag is. Do Our they? kids don't even know you two are. <laughs> God. That's the shame that they don't know what a toe rag is. Mm. Toe, toe rag was a good was a good shout. Do you boys it's a know? Good, yeah, it's a good, right. yeah, yeah, it's a good it's a good put down. Your toe I've rag. called toe rag many a time. <laughs> a little toe rag. <laughs> toe rag. Sc scallywag. Scallywag. Toe rag. So yeah, so you so what about you being an inspiration to young girls? Role model. You are, babe. Like the, the I've lost count of the amount of times people young girls come over to you and say, God, you're you're an inspiration. Yeah, it's 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 so nice, but it it makes me feel scared. But you're always very good with them, but like Because I love kids and people. Yeah. But, you know, they do you got to remember that girls do, do especially with like that bridge that next top model thing, like they, girls are aspiring to be models and they've seen a way to kind of do it and you've kind of shown them that way because you did it. Trailblazer? Trailblazer. No, do you know what I mean? You did and, you know. I, I don't know. I just, I find it very difficult to, um, I don't know. I don't really like talking about myself mm. in that way. Like, I don't like it when you're being serious about me. Yeah, you don't, do you? No. I don't like talking about myself or what I've, what I've done or do. Or... You get all embarrassed when, I'm, when I say that you're a role model. Mm, I don't, don't like it. But you are. Do you well, want me to change the subject? That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank she you. She does it. She gets that's all nice. embarrassed. I do get embarrassed. Was there any stand-up when you were younger than teachers? You know, you, talk, you said Madonna, but... <laughs> Madonna. You, does anyone, do you think back and think, oh, they were a brilliant teacher, they inspired me? You know, a teacher or, a, you know, even a dance teacher or a singing coach or... A... I've met loads of amazing people throughout my life. Like, you know, when I used to, you know, go to dancing when I was a kid, like Craig and Pat, and they had, they'd have me singing all amazing songs and, you know, give me the confidence, like, to get up on stage and, like, sing and dance and... I think that's what it is. It's like someone that gives you the confidence to be yeah. able to do that. Am amazing teachers... I remember this teacher just thought I was unbelievable at art, but I used to just trace everything. And it was so awkward, like, keeping it up. <laughs> Got more difficult. I mean, won loads of prizes in school. I remember drawing the Lowry, right. Lowry City. <laughs> Did you? Mm, and I, and you chased it? Yeah, and he just thought I was the bee's knees. Oh, oh that's no. so funny, that. I respect you for that. But that's, but, that happened to me, didn't it, on the, with the, my Count Duckula. We've discussed this on the you on BT, uh, BT? Where'd you want Blue Peter or something? I've been on Blue Peter a few times. Have you? I've been yeah. on Blue Peter a few times. Yeah. How? Yeah. The back door. 
Yeah, I remember we were, were like I was playing. We were under, England under eighteen. Oh, so Blue Peter as a famous person? No, I wasn't famous. I was a, I was a kid. But you then... know, Pete was in the crowd in the Spice Girl movie. <laughs> <laughs> My big break. <laughs> he took his sister along because he loved the Spice Girls so much. Baby Spice loved her. No, I like I like the Spice Girls. I was I'm not going to lie, right? I, I was a fan of the Spice Girls, you know, <laughs> as we all were. You know, let's don't pretend. Let's not yeah. pretend. And uh, they were filming Spice World, the movie, right? And it was at the Royal Albert Hall. And uh, somehow, um, well, going in the ballot, I got uh, tickets for it. And obviously, I couldn't take my mates. So I, so I thought, I'll take my sister. She's only, like, young. And I was about 17 because <laughs> of Tottenham at the time. I thought, I can't go. Well, I can't go on my own. Right? Anyway, Sarah, I took Sarah with me. She was, like, the deco like the... She's a decoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who's the Spice Girls? That? Um, who's the Spice Girls? Uh, I'm going to take my sister. That bloody Spice Girls. to to be honest, Pete. <laughs> she goes, what's this, Dad? And I was oh, going, you will enjoy it. So just sit there and don't ruin my experience. Pete's like that to all his mates. Oh, I've got to take our Sarah to bloody Spice World, Sarah, haven't I, today? I'm a bloody nightmare. Really good brother. Anyway, I took her and I just, shut up, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> shut up, I'm perving. I was, I was giving it all the night tunes and everything. I was, I was fully What was your favourite Spice Girls, Andy? Cool. I think they only did one because it was like, it was part of the... They only did once. Yeah, because it was, oh, cause on it was the... a film. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. it was like they just kept, I think it might have been Spice Up Your Life. And, uh, and yeah, you can see me on the film. No, you can't. <laughs> You've just made that bit up. I did make that bit up, yeah. But you're not, that's, again, this is what I'm saying. Like, I made up a story there and I, you should have just had my back. Talking about Blue Peter. Yeah, Blue Peter. How did you get on Blue Peter? Oh, so we're Blue Peter. Yeah, we were under 18s with England and they, they came down and watched us train. And I remember he joined in. So yeah, when the, the presenter joined in, I remember he wasn't very good. And um, I can't imagine Blue Peter presenters being good at being the sporty though. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Can't yeah. imagine being it having like twenty keep you ups in the back. No, well we joined in and it was we did take the mick out of him a bit, um, <laughs> but uh, it was a great experience. And I got a little Blue Peter badge. Have you still got it? Yeah, I got I got a collection of badges. Boring. I, <laughs> No, I, I have. I used to collect badges and uh, key rings, and I've, I've got I had millions. Boring. <laughs> My dad collects badges. I loved it. I, I had some great ones, you know. I remember the footy ones when you used to go to the game. Just all over, like no, not just footy ones. Like all like like chess and world adventures, all <laughs> towers, um, Isle of Wight, uh, Black Gang Chine. Um, Black Gang Chine. Yeah, yeah. Black what Gang is Chine. that? It's like the uh, Alton Towers in Isle of Wight. It's spectacular. Uh, London dungeons, like places like that, you know. Like I'd always buy a little keyring. Nice. Like, memento of the day. I have, I have something similar to a memory memory box, like the wristbands from festivals and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Good times. Not blue beater badges though. Do you have any um, kind of role models now? There's so many people who inspire me. Like our friends John and Caroline. Like she is so clever and so intelligent, and she just makes me want to do more with my life. Mm. So many of our friends like that, you know, Andrew Martin, Martin, you know, he's, you know, traveled the world. He's so intelligent. You know, he's so got so much style and great taste and content can make any little thing look fantastic. Um, yeah, so much like you inspire me. Like you, you work, you work so hard and, you know, everyone loves you and you're an amazing dad. You know, f for me to be inspired, it doesn't mean you have to be like a multi-billionaire or this or that. You know, it's, you know, yeah. just having these qualities. Someone who can make someone laugh in a room, like make everyone feel good around them, that they, they're they considered role models to me or in inspire mm. me mm. to yeah, be like I think a that... better... I think for me, a role model is someone who you can look at and kind of pinch ideas from if you like and improve yourself. Yeah, make you a better person. Make you and a better I think person. That's it. Like definitely, like there's qualities that you've got that I have tried to instill in me, genuinely. Like and what? I think, I think hopefully the same way. No, like no, because you're you're kind of really proactive. <laughs> you're like you know you're a go getter. You know you don't take any shit. You know like I there's there's things that I need to improve on that that you've got. These are all the qualities that genuinely yesterday you said you hate in me. No, they can, well, they can be a pain all of them ass as well. But like Literally. no 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 they're they're good they're good qualities, but they're different to to to, to what I am. So they're like they're things I can improve on. Whereas there's things maybe that I have that you can improve on. Your zen. Yeah, a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that's one of them. Mm. 
you know, you, you, in all honesty, it doesn't matter. Like, you can be a go getter and you can be, like, you know, obviously really focused and dedicated. But if I'm you not don't... a go getter for me, though. But what? I'm definitely not a go getter for, for myself. No, I think I you have, are. I, think I, you don't. are. I, think, I think you're just, I think you're on it. You're, but I haven't said that. You know, you can be. My ideas are for everyone else. I can never think of anything for myself to do. No. Do I? The only thing I want to do is ride, ride my horse. <laughs> no, I do. That's like the main thing that makes me happy as a hobby, if you like. Well, You're on it, it with everything else, aren't you? You are on it. And what I'm saying is that, but if you don't have that kind of balance of like, it's like, where are you going? Like, why are you trying to do all these things and trying to work, 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 work? And then like, if you don't have that balance of like, actually... Is that making you happy? Yeah. I think sometimes you can go, you can tilt it too far, but you have to get that. You have to, yeah, of course, you have to be proactive. Yeah, but that's just be... poor diary management. Is it? Yeah. What is? That Talking tilt, about the, the, tilt, the tilt. The tilt is. Because you can do stuff you love, but if you do too much of your love and it becomes stressful, then the tilt becomes. Mm, that's which what is I mean. kind that's of what, what we're I mean. in. That's what now. I'm trying to say is like, you need to bring up the, the happiness. Time. Pete, but that's what a puppy does. It balances that scale. <laughs> All that does, it masks. It, that's what it does. It masks the scale. You I don't know what you're talking about. You're happy. I am happy. I'm psychoanalyzing you now. I know, stop. <laughs> you're getting it totally wrong, you freak. <laughs> Some of your language to your husband. <laughs> Is an absolute disgrace. What my god, just say a toe rag. Fucking toe rag. Freak. 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 Agony abs, all right? Hi, Who's guys. Skin, brother? <laughs> hey, guys. Love the pod so much. It's my husband's 40th in Jan, and I really want to plan a nice <gasps> what surprise date? for him. That's ours. Mm. Do we know what date? No. Oh. <laughs> what are you going to do? Are you going to do something for him? No, because then we could say, oh my god, that's the same day as <laughs> oh, us. Okay. We're okay. all January in our family. Well, three of us are. Yep. The other three of June, March. Cool story, bro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, he's, uh, he's incredible at surprise, surprise trips and buying gifts, which is lovely, but I have a lot to live up to. In the past, I plan trips away, surprises, he finds out and changes the plans or upgrades them. This is lovely, but I want to... Let me upgrade you. But I want to pull this off on my own. Any ideas are welcome. We have two little boys, so although I'd love to go child-free, it can only be for two, three nights max. Thanks, Anon. Any ideas? Two or three nights. Got a lot to live up to. Two or three nights is all you need. It's all you need. That's We've been trying to get these two nights for yeah. six months. It's tough. <sighs> so, so it's, you know, I think a little Paris, mm. a little Rome. The Euro style, you get from King's Cross, they're easy to exactly. do. Dead cheap as well. A little Amsterdam. Little Barcelona, little damn one, yeah, yeah. Those those little city breaks are just oh. are, are unreal. We, we used I, I to do them a lot. Yeah, we did. But Rome was a belt, wasn't it? Florence, Florence, Capri. <sighs> yeah, good, good times. Just, mm. I base I I pick my destination on the food. We get some good deals in January as well, don't you? It's Italy's up there. Like the food's just unreal. Oh, you just it? can't beat it. Like so many. Like, Watching that Judge Rinder show. Have you seen that? No. So good about all the amazing hotels, and they were in um, Puglia. We've mm. been desperate to go to Puglia all mm. oh, summer. Looks amazing, didn't it? Oh my god, I love Judrin actually. Anyway, mm. Rome, you can't beat Rome. Oh, it just just everywhere you go. Like we when we said we said I was we had a guide, and he was showing us bits and pieces and things like that. It was amazing, like the Colosseum and do you remember? And I was like, oh my god, what's that? And he went, that's the, just the post office. <laughs> and I was like, wow, it's incredible. Like literally, everything's, like, everything's beautiful. Just, yeah. You know, from... I want to go to Berlin. Yeah, I'd like to go to mm. Berlin. Or Porto. It's supposed to be amazing. So many... You know, we need to we need to start our little um, weekend trip again because obviously we did our Dublin. Mm. Um, and, you know, we, I said to my dad, we should make this like a regular thing. Yeah. You know, going on our little two-day trips. Just walking out of the hotel, do you remember? And we just go for like a walk. That's just a great it's thing to do, epic, isn't it? It's just isn't it? In Florence, we stayed right Get the, the Solomons on. Get yeah. out there. Do you know where's nice? Bilbao. Have you been to Bilbao? No. Oh, sure. Bilbao's really nice, actually, in northern Spain. A bit like Liverpool, almost reminds me of a little Ooh. bit. Quite industrial, like Amsterdam. Basque. Like Guggenheim, country, there, the food's amazing. Mm. Basque? Yeah, yeah, yeah. East Basque. Yeah, so uh, where could you... Yeah, so Rome. 
I think Rome's the one. I just think you can't go wrong, really. No. Or the staycation. Yeah. Somewhere in the UK, maybe. Or, yeah, it's, it's, yeah where's, where's nice UK-wise? Get down to Cornwall or something, can you? I've never been to Cornwall. Oh, it's lovely. Mm. I've never been. It's nice down there. I've had York's nice as well. I've been to York. No. Rambles, no, what's it called? The sh what's it called, them streets? Yeah. The shambles. Or Bath was quite nice, wasn't Bath it? Bath was beautiful. Brighton's quite good fun. Yeah. Um, mm. Loads of options there, I think. Defo. There's no place like Rome. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny good. as well, aren't you? Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> one, please. How do I make my husband of 23 years understand that when I say I don't want any for... I don't want anything for Christmas or birthdays, etc. I don't mean it. What is, it? what is this? His Why? default should be to go, should be to go to the list of things I've mentioned over the last six months. Please tell me I don't have to tell him what to buy, or I think we may as well throw the towel in. If the element of surprise is gone, is it over? Do I expect too much? How do we do this? Example: I said let's just spend ten pound on each other. This Christmas, as we don't need anything, not for one minute did I think he would stick to this. He went mad with. I went mad with beautiful gifts. I got shitty woolen gloves. <laughs> you get my drift. Yeah, I've been there, done there. I said to Pete a couple of Christmases ago, let's not get each other any presents. And then I thought, he's not going to expect anything now. I'm going to get him loads of lovely things. And I didn't get one. It's your own fault. I don't get it. Do you? What? No. Why say? Well, I don't want to say. I want a Chanel bag. I want three Chanel bags. I want a diamond brace. <laughs> 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 I want a Bentley and a, a puppy. puppy. <laughs> No, but I don't I, really want to say that. It makes me sound like I'm, you know, a bit well, spoiled or a anything, bit of a brat. Like, just don't say anything then. Just, just say like, can't you. wait for Christmas this year. What are you going to get me? Or, you know, like, don't, don't say it. You make a point of saying, let's not do presents this year and then not mean it. It doesn't make any sense. Same this silly girl as well. Same thing. <laughs> if you said as well, like, let's do a £10 spend limit, that to me is explicitly... Like, That's like, you've you set know, the, back, like, yeah, the yeah, ground yeah. rules there. And that, I think that'd be good. Like, if you could, if you could do a thoughtful uh, sorry, gift Sorry, we're not doing tenner. a £10 present. You can th shove that up your ass. <laughs> it's all, you know, I don't want any sentiment this year. I've had 18 years of sentiment. <laughs> I just you. want to be spoilt rotten. <laughs> well, at least that's pretty crystal, crystal clear. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'd rather that than, than saying something well, you, th you think I might be joking? I mean that. No, I know you do. So, yeah. I can't wait for Christmas. <laughs> I, I just don't get it. I, I'm, I, I'll never get that. He's bought a... Would you be a, sad if you didn't get a Christmas pounds. present now? Not if we said not to. I, I don't, you like a little gift. Obviously, everyone does. It's mm. nice, you know what I mean? It's like, it's nice to get a gift and, and that's what Christmas is about. It's about, you know, it's about giving. It's about being thoughtful. Hi both. A girl I work with is on a health kick, but the food she eats doesn't react well with her bowels. <laughs> When she comes into our you know small that? site cabin, when she comes into our small site cabin office once a week, I work on construction sites. The place stinks of farts. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously hair. Sorry, it's a small. The the place when she comes into the um when she comes into our small site cabin office for once a week, we work on a construction site. The place stinks of farts. It's obviously hair, as it's only when she's about. Is it acceptable to ask where, ask a wear colleague to stop farting or is this too rude? I'm a fella, so the fact a man would be asking a woman to stop stinking the gaff out seems inappropriate, oh although God. it's needed from a non, and I know she listens to this. <laughs> oh, my God. He's a non bit. He's a non oh. She listens. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. I hate that though. When when it's obvious that you know, if there's like two of you in a that room and so you, you know bad. you haven't done something yourself, yeah. and it's obvious that it's them. Oh, it's oh horrible. my god! But she's listening to this now. That she probably knows. She's like, gonna unless die. she's dropping them for for the sheer fun of it. She <laughs> yeah. goes in. I'm going to drop a bomb on these lads and walk out. See what they say. As if. As if. Yeah, but she, I don't was she think working anyone on the building in the site? history of. She must have something about her. If she's yeah. You know what I mean? Site cab, like, yeah, construction site. She's probably, she must be dealing with fellas all the time. Like, no, she's obviously the boss. Yeah, but she she must be dealing with like these, you know, childish lads. Yeah. A lot going on in the building site, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I, 
walked into. She's going, the... I'm going to drop this bomb on him and like, it's great, Banner, if she is. If she's not and she's listening to this, she's going to be very I don't think that's great, Banner. I think it's I'll disgusting. Be, it's funny. Pete, no one deliberately farts. Well, I think you do. <laughs> 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 Oh my god, that is disgusting, John. <laughs> the timing! The timing! How is that even possible? Oh, oh. I just squeezed that one out. Wow! You no, know, if you did that, I'd literally dump you instantly. Instant. That'd be an instant. An instant. You're getting dumped. See, I can't oh. even... I don't find that funny. Ah, oh, so funny. It's oh. like Pete last night. He was... Not funny. He... I not funny. <laughs> you said... <laughs> so I don't know... I don't think anyone farts on purpose and he's just <laughs> dropped one. Oh. Pete was oh, like this in bed wow. last night, hysterically laughing at this oh. m- video that my dad sent him of men doing like... <laughs> trick shots. Trick yeah, shots? Yeah, it was, it was sick. funny, it was it? sick, yeah. It was just the worst funny. thing I've what ever my, seen in my, my life. What, the, what I did wrong was Shabab. <laughs> she went, that is People so was crying, nice. laughing in bed. I was like, what is this? Oh, I thought it was brilliant. Oh, God, that's oh, tickled me out. That, that, that was a good message. Babe, this is not the Peter Crouch podcast today, you know? <laughs> I didn't do it. I just, you know, he just... I, I don't know when Can farts are. you do aren't. that on demand? Um... No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. Probably. Probably. Do you want to read this last one? I've got to get this off my chest. My wife is amazing and I do love her. But her, la- her lack of effort and complete negligence towards stacking the dishwasher properly is proper grinding on me. We've been together nearly 15 years, married nine, and it's getting progressively worse. Uh, I joke about it hoping she might take the hint, but I'm getting nowhere. It's pointless using the dishwasher as we end up having to hand wash them as soon as... hand wash them as, as soon as it's finished or fire them on another cycle, which obviously costs more money. It's going to end in tears sooner rather than later. Oof. Dishwashing Ryan problems. Ryan from Scotland. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> I do like have Scottish yeah, I think he should un- empty, the, uh, stack the dishwasher himself. Yeah, it's that much the of a problem. That is the answer. I thought that when I read the before. Mm. So how dare you complain? Do it yourself. <sighs> if this was a female writing this in, would you have said that? No. <laughs> I would have said, teach him, mm. give him a, a tutorial on how to stack the dishwasher properly. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about this. It's a difficult one to kind of rectify, isn't it? I would just say to her, like, what are you doing? Dishwasher. Yeah, but you don't, you don't come near, near do the dishwasher. Stack, so I do stack the dishwasher. If I'm in work or something. No, but I, that's the, like, I don't, I don't do loads around the house, but I, I do do that. But I won't. <laughs> Why do I keep singing all the time today? Get rid of her, uh, Ryan. <laughs> she sounds like a right. <laughs> she sounds like a right pain in the ass. Get rid. Useless. Um, what do you think of today's pod? Enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was a bit random. Nah, as usual. You know what? Always the best. Always as usual. The best. Um, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> What's this? You're my role model. Thanks. Now you are. I joke about it, but you are. You, you you've got some great qualities that I try and aspire to. I mean that. Do you? Yes, I do mean that. And some of them, they are. Some of them are hard at times, but got a little fly on you. But they, but you are. You're, you're you're inspirational to a lot of people and to our children and to me. Well, I hope we're good role models. I like to think our children look up to us and go, you know, my mum and dad are great. They're in love. The fun, the love us, the work hard to give us everything we've got, and you know, I'd love to them to to think that, but I don't think they probably do. <laughs> I don't Which think. Is a shame. I, I think the little ones would. The older one. Deep down, I think they would. Yeah. Deep down. Mm. All right. All right. Love one down, babe. We'll see you next week. See you next week.